ಪತಿತಂ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ಸೊ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಟು ಕಾಂಟೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಗೀತಾ ಸಮರೈಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ನಂಬರ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಶೇರ್ ಮೈ ಸ್ಕ್ರೀನ್ hope you are able to see my screen please repeat after me om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಅಕೀರ್ತಿ ಭೂತ ಕಥಯಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ತೇ ವ್ಯಯ ಮರಣಾದತಿರಿಚ್ಯತೆ ಅಕೀರ್ತಿ ಭೂತಿ ಭೂತಿ ಮರಣಾತಿರಿಚ್ಯತೆ ಅಕೀರ್ತಿ ಕಥಯಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ಸಂಭಾವಿತರ್ತಿರಿಚ್ಯತೆ ಕಥಯಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ಸಂಭಾವಿತರ್ತಿರಿಚ್ಯತೆ ಅಕೀರ್ತಿ ಕಥಯಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ವ್ಯಯ ಕಥಯಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ಸಂಭಾವಿ ಚಾಕೀರ್ ಕಥಯಿಷ್ಯಂತಿ ಚಾಕೀರ್ತಿ 
Thank you. Translation and purport by Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. People will always speak of your infamy, and for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. Purport. Both as friend and philosopher to Arjuna, Lord Krishna now gives his final judgment regarding Arjuna's refusal to fight. The Lord says, Arjuna, if you leave the battlefield before the battle even begins, people will call you a coward. And if you think that people may call you bad names, but that you will save your life by fleeing the battlefield, then my advice is that you would do better to die in the battle. For a respectable man like you, ill fame is worse than death. So you should not flee for fear of your life. Better to die in the battle. That will save you from the ill fame of misusing my friendship and from losing your prestige in society. So the final judgment of the Lord was for Arjuna to die in the battle and not withdraw. So these, these verses uh, that we are reading, beginning from verse number 33 uh, and ending in 36, these discuss the faults of not fighting. Arjuna, he uh, you know, decided not to fight and Krishna has explained that first of all, Arjuna's this idea of that he, he will be killing his grandfather and his guru. Uh, he explained that actually we are not our body. So therefore, in fact, he will not be killing him. You know, he will not be killing his grandfather or his guru. And then uh, he started giving other reasons. The particular reason here Krishna is saying Arjuna is a Kshatriya and it is his duty that he has to fight. And in fact, if he doesn't fight, he will be neglecting his duty and therefore uh, it will be sinful. So then if he doesn't fight, uh, you know, what are some of the other problems that, that could come. Uh, and those are discussed in this verse. Uh, the aspect of uh, sin was discussed in yesterday's class by His Grace Parimon Prabhu. He discussed verses 32 and 33, just for the sake of you know, revision and, and because they are one unit. Uh, I'll be reading that once again. Atachetva mimam dharmyam sangramam na karishyasi I think you're seeing the split screen. I'm going to hide presenter's view. Okay, I have dual monitors. So the translation, if however you do not perform your religious duty of fighting, then you will certainly incur sins for neglecting your duties and thus lose your reputation as a fighter. So this was uh, the first fault. He will be neglecting uh, his duty and therefore for neglecting his duty uh, he will incur sins. And he will also his reputation, his kirti uh, will also go away. But then the effects of his kirti uh, going away are discussed in today's verse. Akirtim chapi bhutani kataishyam titevyayam now, this uh, people will talk about his infamy, but they'll talk perpetually about his infamy. Avyayam. Avyaya was discussed as one of the characteristics of the soul when he was describing. Uh, there were many adjectives used in the description of the soul. Uh, one of them was avyaya, inexhaustible. So here he's saying uh, your fame, uh, you'll be infamous, uh, avyaya akirti. But you are actually respectable, sambhavita. 
So for a, such a person like you, dishonor is worse than death. So Arjuna had great reputation. He was a great fighter, Arjuna. Uh, he was carrying Gandiva bow. Uh, he even traveled to other planets. Mm -hmm. He pleased Lord Shiva. He got weapons from Indra. Uh, he also satisfied Agni by helping him you know, eat all the herbs in the forest. In this way, he pleased you know, many demigods and his reputation is very, very strong. And primarily here on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Krishna himself is acting as the chariot driver for Arjuna. He took up the position of Arjuna's chariot driver. So that means Arjuna's kirti is so powerful. What does the word kirti mean? We have kirti in the audience. Does kirti it mean word. fame, Prabhuji? <laughs> yes, huh? fame. Arjuna is very famous. Arjuna is very famous. Huh? And now, because of this action, if he withdraws from the battle, then uh, all his fame will be lost. And it is so bad that Krishna is saying, what will people think? I mean, even I am acting as your chariot driver. In spite of all this, you give up. It's so bad, Arjuna. It's better you die than do this. And it's a fact for a kshatriya, for, for a respectable person, dishonor is worse than death. Particularly in the Vedic culture, uh, this uh, protecting the honor of oneself and one's family is such a big thing. Nowadays, <laughs> it's all gone. Uh, but you know, if you uh, you know go back uh, uh, into our family traditions, we will try very hard to protect our family traditions and good name for the family. Mm -hmm. There was a song in this song. I don't know what movie it was. Papa kahte hai. Who remembers that song? Beta hamara bada naam, something like that. Who remembers that song? No one? Papa kahte hai bada naam karega. Beta hamara. I said, kaam karega. He'll do such a big thing and, and you know, bring me a very big name. So this is this is something very, very... Uh, important uh, to bring a good name, uh, not only just for ourselves, for the entire family, for the dynasty. And so much so that in the Vedic tradition, people are addressed by, the, by their parents' name, oh, son of so-and-so. Mm -hmm. Arjuna is called Kaunteya, son of Kunti. Pandava, son of Pandu, or, or Kaurava, descendant of Kuru. But because so there is so much fame that from you know such an ancestor of many, many generations, because he was so famous, everybody is called by his name. And now if Arjuna, he just wants to go away and that dishonor will be so bad and perpetually for generations, people may remember that. So therefore, Arjuna, it's better you die hmm? than uh, not to fight. And Srila Prabhupada gives a, uh, uh, you know, one incident, he mentions this a few times in his lectures about Kshatriyas. He said there was a commander-in-chief for Aurangzeb. His name was Yeshwamanta Sena. And one day he went to fight a battle and he lost. And then he came back home. So his wife got the news that he lost the battle. She told the servants to shut down the palace gates. <laughs> and Yeshwamantasen came and started knocking on the door. He said, why are you not opening the door? The, the queen has ordered um, you know, to, to close the doors. 
go tell her that the king has come. And so he relayed that, that the soldier, the, he relayed, the attendant, he relayed that to the, the queen, his wife, Yashamanta Sena's wife. And um, she said, he said, uh, Yashamanta Sen said, he has come, the king has come, open the doors. And she said, oh, Yashamanta Sen is a Kshatriya. He will either win the battle and come or he will die in the battle. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. Prabhupada didn't say what happened, <laughs> whether she opened the door or, <laughs> or, or sent him to fight again. I don't know what happened next. But the point was, this was the tradition. This was the tradition. The tradition was uh, either you will win the battle or you will die. But a true Kshatriya, he will not come back. And this Kirti, is so important that Chanakya says, Kirtir Yasya Sa Jivati. That person who has Kirti, fame, he will live. He will live, continue, he will continue to live even after he die. Because his good name, because of the good deeds he has done, uh, that fame and reputation will continue to exist beyond his body. So therefore, uh, for, for Arjuna to not uh, fight and leave the battle, this is not good. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the next verse. Bhayadranaduparatam mansyante tvam maharataha yesham chatvam bahumato bhutva yasyasi laghavam. The great generals who have highly esteemed your name and fame will think that you have left the battlefield out of fear only. And thus, they'll consider you insignificant. So two things are important in this that we'll discuss later. is bhayad ranaduparatam, the bhaya, the fear, and ya, laghavam yasyasi, you'll become insignificant. Mm -hmm. Uh, lagu means small, guru means heavy, and laghavam means the smallness. So yasyasi laghavam means you will go smallness, that means you become insignificant. You were so big, sambhavitasya, you were very respectable and big, but then now you will go to insignificance, you will go to minuteness. So this is what, and, and who will think like that? the Maharathas. Who are Maharathas? What does a Maharatha mean? Who is a Maharatha? One who has a great chariot. It's like Mahaprasada, Maharatha. Or is it a chariot that's offered to Krishna which comes as Prasadam? <laughs> what is a Maharatha? Perhaps someone who commands several Vratas, you know, like a... Like who a, can fight multiple warriors at same time. Mm. Yes. yes. This person can fight with 10,000 bowmen at one time. Maharatha. If you have 10,000 archers, you know, 10,000 bowmen trying to fight, this one Maharatha can deal with so many people. I mean, it's it's the you know highest fighting skill, being a maharata, and atirata is someone who fights with uh, more than thousand but less than ten thousand. And and so this is the situation of even Arjuna is a maharata, but there are other maharatas. So Arjuna may say, well, everybody they know that. I am such a great person, such a great warrior, and out of generosity, I will not fight. They know, you know that I am compassionate. Out of compassion for my brothers and my grandfather, for my teacher, for my uncles, for the sons and all these people. So therefore, overwhelmed with compassion, out of kind-heartedness, I will go away from the battlefield. 
because they know I am very powerful. Why would I go away? No, no, Arjuna. There are many Maharathas on the other side. Duryodhana, Karna, all these are you know, great fighters. What will they think? They think they can actually defeat you. They're more powerful than you. That's what, that's what they think. And of course, there's Bhishma, Drona. These are all very powerful people. Karna. <laughs> they think you are afraid. Because of fear, bhayad, ran, bhayad ranad uparatam. Out of fear, you have left the battlefield. This is what they think. They won't think you are uh, compassionate and all that stuff. They'll think you are very weak. And, and for a kshatriya, these are very, very important things. Like a lot of times, these big fights, you know, whether it's what kind, whatever conflict it may be, that conflict gets, you know, flared up because of us thinking what the other person is thinking, right? What he must be thinking. We think that they are thinking like that, and we behave in such a way to change that thinking. This is how the world functions. Is if we are, you know, properly on the path of Krishna consciousness, then we'll be guided by what Krishna is saying. What are the principles of Krishna consciousness? The, the guidance of the spiritual masters, sadhu, shastra. That's how we'll be guided. But otherwise, we'll be guided by everything around us. What what does the what is the media is saying? What will people think? What will this person think? So we live our life for the sake of others' thinking. So it's such an important thing that we behave based on what others think. So for a kshatriya, that's very important because a kshatriya, he needs some honor, he needs some respect that motivates him to continue in the world. And now Krishna is reminding Arjuna, these Maharatas, they will criticize you. They think you're insignificant. You just ran away like a coward. Out of fear of these Maharatas, because they're so powerful, you're afraid. Therefore, you ran away from the battlefield. This is what they will think. Avachya vadanscha bahun vadishyanti tavahitaha your enemies will describe you in many unkind words and scorn your ability. What could be more painful for you? Tava samadhyam nindantaha vadishyanti. They'll speak, they'll speak while insulting, criticizing your ability. Samatya means his ability. And what else is more painful? Dukkataram. Dukkataram nukim. And these are avachya vadam. Avachya vadam means the words that should not be spoken. They should never say like that to you, but you know they'll say things like this. And they'll make fun of you. This is, I mean, if others make fun of us, it's so difficult to bear. Even little children, say if there are little kids and you just laugh. Say, Mommy, that's not funny. <laughs> right? That's the response you get. I remember Sugopi when she was little. She does something and I laugh. She's like, that's not funny. Because it their ego gets hurt. And Krishna is reminding Arjuna, you know, how can how can a Kshatriya tolerate this? We know the example of Dhruva Maharaj. He was insulted by his stepmother. 
she told him, you cannot sit on the lap of your father. The father was sitting on the throne. He was the eldest son, so he, would, he, had, the, he had the claim for the throne. So he was a little child just for you know, playing. His brother, younger brother was sitting, so he also went and sat. His stepmother said, you cannot sit on the lap of your father. You cannot sit on that throne. You have to take birth in my womb to be able to do that. Oh, Dhruva was so offended. And he wanted to go to Krishna. Because his mother told him. He went to his mother and complained. The mother said, I'm sorry, I cannot do anything about this. Because your father, he likes your stepmother more than he likes me. So therefore, I cannot do anything. But there is one person who can help you. Who is that? That's Krishna. Oh, where can I find him? Well, usually, uh, you know, staunch sages, they go to forest and there they look for Krishna and they meditate and they find Krishna over there. Oh, okay. So he goes to forest to find Krishna. And then Narada Muni finds out and he's like, hey, Dhruva, what are you doing here? And Dhruva explains everything what happened. Come on, you are a five-year-old boy. Just go home and play. Forget about it. Little children, yeah, they get upset, but they also easily forgive and forget. Next morning, everything is all right. They go and play. So go play. Play with your brother and your friends. No, no, no. This is a very serious matter. Oh, why? Because it, it's very difficult. She told these words to me. And now the money says, just forgive. Forgiveness is so saintly. Forgiveness is the, the highest principle. It's the highest principle of, you know, mode of goodness. You should be in the goodness. Then Dhruva Mara says, what can I do? I'm a Kshatriya. I'm a Kshatriya. I cannot tolerate this insult. I want to prove that I can get the throne. Actually, I, I want to get a bigger kingdom than my father. And his determination was so strong and he did it. So Narada, he begs forgiveness from Narada, please forgive me, O saint. But I'm a Kshatriya, I cannot tolerate this insult. Now please give me an honest means. Kshatriya, he is not trying to be dishonest. Give me an honest means by which I can take the revenge. I can get, I can not necessarily take the revenge, but I can prove that I am not so insignificant as what my stepmother was thinking. Nandamuni smiles and says, wow, these, the ways of Kshatriyas are amazing. Hmm? Little child, but he has so much determination. The blood of a Kshatriya, right? So he does. Narada gives the means and within six months he sees Krishna and he gets the boon. Of course, once he sees Krishna, he gives up his desire, but still Krishna gives him what he wanted. And this is the Kshatriyas. They cannot tolerate it. And because it was very Dukkataram for Dhruva. So therefore, Krishna is saying, Arjuna, you cannot tolerate this. You cannot tolerate this. So now we will analyze a little bit everything, what was said, and try to compare with the characteristics of a Kshatriya. What are the characteristics of a Kshatriya? Krishna has given this in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. The characteristics of a Kshatriya. Shauryam Tejo Dhritir Daksham Yudde Chapya Palayanam Dhanam Ishwara Bhavascha Kshatram Karma Svabhavajam Shauryam. Shauryam means heroism. Teja is power, dhriti, determination. Dakshyam, expertise, resourcefulness. And yudhe apalayanam, 
Palayana means running. <laughs> Yudhe apalayana means in, when it's time for the battle, he will not run away from the battle. This Srila Prabhupada expressed said the courage in the battle and generosity. He's very generous, dhanam, charitable. Another synonym, charitable. Kshatriyas are very charitable. And then Ishwara Bhava. Ishwara Bhava means I am the leader, the leadership qualities. So these are the characteristics of a Kshatriya. And that is why Krishna has said in verse number 33 that how can you give your Swadharma? His Swadharma is Kshatriya. Kshatriya Dharma. And the characteristics of that Kshatriya Dharma are these seven. And Arjuna, Krishna has expressed that you will be giving up all these things. He started with, uh, you'll be, you shouldn't give up your dharma, you'll get sin if you give up your dharma. And then he explained how the world will uh, put him in this bucket that he has given up his dharma. He said, bhayat ranad uparatam. Bhaya. What does bhaya mean? Hmm. Radhika, you call your bhaiya. What does bhaiya mean? What is bhaiya and bhaiya? I don't know if Radhika is here today. Usually she is there. Can anyone ever have a bhaiya? Bhaiya means brother. Hmm? Okay, Radhika is here. What does bhaiya mean? Brother. What does bhaya mean? Fear. Bhaya means fear. <laughs> do, you, do you have bhaya for your bhaya? Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, bhaya drana duparatam. People will say, you, with, you have withdrawn from this battle. You ran away. Out of fear, bhaya. But Shauryam, Shauryam means courage, fearlessness. A Kshatriya is supposed to have Shauryam. But now you have given up that Shaurya. That's what, that's what people will think. Mansyante, Janaha. And then he has Teja. Teja means vigor. Vigor means, you know, full of uh, health and strength. You, you look like a weak guy. The brahmanas, they, they are cowards. The brahmanas, if something is going on, they may hide under the bed. But the kshatriyas are not like that. Sometimes, um, actually Arjuna, he criticizes one time his brother, Yudhishthira, you are a coward, you are like a Brahmana, you are not a Kshatriya. Hmm? But Kshatriyas, they are so much vigor, so much strength is there to go and fight. And determination, Dhriti, like, like Dhruva, he has so much determination. And what, and Arjuna, the people will think that, you know, you're a coward. You don't have this determination to fight. You came to do it, but the first obstacle came and you're running away. You just looking at everybody, you are scared. That's what they'll think. They have the bigger army. Now you have seen that, you know, they have 11 Akshauhinis. You have seven, such a big army. They will think that look, by seeing that big army, all these big, big, big Maharatas, now you're running away. Nindantastava samarthyam. Your ability, they'll scorn your ability, samarthyam. But a kshatriya daksham is expert. How can a person who is expert will be uh, that he is unable to do something? How can an expert be unable? How can an expert be incapable? A kshatriya is supposed to have daksham. 
they will scorn your ability because you have left the battlefield. And specifically, the, the characteristic of a Kshatriya is Yudhe Apalayanam. Yudhe Apalayanam. Not running away from the fight. But here, Uparatam. You are withdrawing from the battle. Ranad Uparatam. Of course, here, charitable hmm, generosity doesn't apply that much unless if they have come and say, oh, Arjuna, uh, don't fight. We'll give you some kingdom. <laughs> they did not do that. <laughs> Somebody is asking him for charity. Hmm? They were just challenging him. You get up from here. Nobody is begging him to give charity. He is running away. And then Ishvara Bhava. A Kshatriya is supposed to be Ishvara Bhava. Have Ishvara Bhava. But properly uh, channeled, properly guided by the Brahmanas. So, but here Arjuna, he is not taking the responsibility and being a leader. What will even people on his side think? If he gives up the battle, he's supposed to show way for everyone else and motivate them as well and be a leader. But now he's, he's giving up that as well. So this will be in a very, Arjuna will be in a very uh, awkward situation because he'll be giving up his Swadharma. A Kshetriya is somebody who will protect others. Instead of that, now he's running for his life. <laughs> what to protect others? This is what people will think. So these are uh, some of my thoughts on, on this particular thing. And to speak a little bit more on, the, on this nature of a Kshatriya, and a nice pastime between Varaha and Hiranyaksha, uh, they... Today is Lord Varaha's appearance day. And when Varaha and Hiranyaksha, they fight. And Kshatriyas, when they fight, they appreciate uh, you know, each other's fighting skills. When Arjuna would fight in the battle of Kurukshetra, even the other side will appreciate some of Arjuna's uh, the moves who may, he make, mm -hmm. the way he attacks people. Okay. If somebody attacks, how he escapes. Okay. All these, they appreciate. I think somebody's microphone is open. So, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's like a game. It's like a game for the Kshatriyas. And that's why Krishna said, happy are the Kshatriyas for whom fighting opportunities come unsought. They'll become enlivened to go and fight. So Varahadev and Hiranyaksha, they also had a fight. And why were they fighting? Because Mother Earth she was submerged in the ocean of the Garbhodaka waters. And those, the reason it happened was because uh, Hiranyaksha and Hiranyakashipu, they dug up Mother Earth for gold. And because of their bad deeds, they pushed Mother Earth down. And Hiranyakashipu, uh, he had, uh, you know, he was also looking for somebody to fight with, not Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha. And Hiranyaksha, he goes to different uh, people to fight with, but nobody could fight with him. He's so powerful because he got boon from Lord Brahma, Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu. So he goes to Varuna, Varuna Dev. He challenges Varuna, come fight with me. Kshatriya, when challenged, he has to fight. But Varuna knows this guy is a demon. 
and he knows that the right person to fight with him is Krishna. Varunadav says, oh, I'm getting old. Real, it, it's, you are really looking for a good fight. Go fight with Krishna. Oh, where is he? He tells him, you know, you go find him there near the shore of Garbhodara Ocean. So Hiranyaksha, he goes. And when he goes, he sees Varahadev. And he's surprised to see Varahadev. And he insults Varahadev. Oh, amphibious beast. He's like, you are an animal. This planet, it belongs to us. It belongs to us, the Dhanavas, the Daityas. And you, and the chief of demigods, and you are trying to take away this, this planet Earth. And now Mother Earth, she's actually, um, in this pastime, she's concert of Varahadev. So Varahadev is protecting his, his consort, his girlfriend, and somebody is trying to steal his consort. So Varahadev first, he, he lifts Mother Earth. He puts her in proper situation. He saves Mother Earth before fighting with the demon. And the demon actually hits Varahadev with his club. And when, when demon was speaking in these bad words, actually Varahadev feels insulted. Where does this Kshatriya get this nature that he feels insulted? It's coming Varahadev, it's coming from Krishna. Varahadev feels insulted. And he, he goes back and he says, indeed, indeed we are the animals of the jungle. We are the animals of jungle. We are jungle animals. We are forest animals. And we are hunting for the village dogs like you. <laughs> Hiranyaksha calls him amphibious beast and Varahadev calls him, you are a dog. And they fight and fight and fight and hit each other. All the demigods are watching. And finally, uh, Varahadev, he, you know, kills Hiranyaksha. And they enjoy this fighting a lot. And actually, uh, one time, what happens is uh, Hiranyaksha, he hits Varahadev and Varahadev's club, it, it drops off. And Hiranyaksha also he will throw away his club. And Varahadev appreciates, appreciates his, his Kshatriya Dharma. You know, he's trying to follow the rules of combat. He's following the rules of fighting. And this is that Kshatriya nature. And here we see also Krishna is provoking Arjuna. How come you being a Kshatriya Give up all these Kshatriya principles and run away from the battle. And in this Varahadeva pastime also, you see all these elements, how they cannot tolerate the insult, following the rules of the battle, not running away. In this way, they fight. And Mother Earth, um, she is called Vishnu Patni. There's a beautiful prayer that uh, the Brahmanas say when they wake up in the morning, the devotees say a prayer to Mother Earth. When we wake up from the bed, we put our feet on the ground. So we say this prayer uh, to Mother Bhumi. Samudra Vasane Devi Parvatasthana Mandali Vishnu Patni Namastubhyam Padasparsham Kshamaswamam Oh, Vishnu Patni, oh, wife of Vishnu, wife of Lord Varahadev, Namastubhyam, 
I offer my respects unto you. Samudra Vasane Devi. You see that globe that Lord Varahadev is carrying Mother Earth. The blue region is all the waters, Samudra. Samudra Vasane Devi. So that Samudra is like garments of Mother Earth. You are clothed by this ocean. So she has nice blue garments. Samudra Vasane Devi Parvatasthana Mandali. This um, Parvata, the mountains, they are your breasts. And Vishnu Patni Namastubhya. You are the wife of Lord Varaha. I offer my respects unto you. And Pada Sparsham Kshamasvamaham. I am setting my foot upon you, O Mother Earth. Please forgive me. I beg for your forgiveness. And this is the prayer of Mother Earth. And Lord Varaha has lifted this Mother Earth. Now this was done two times. One was in the beginning of the creation. Lord Brahma, he creates uh, his Manasaputras and he tells everybody to beget children but they won't listen to him. Four Kumaras, they, don't, they refuse to follow his father's instruction. He gives birth to Lord Shiva and Lord Shiva uh, he's producing all these uh, you know ghosts and rakshasas and Lord Brahma says now you stop begetting. So then he produces uh, Swayam Manu and his wife Shatarupa and he tells them you uh, go ahead and procreate and he says my dear father Bhumi is submerged in the waters of Gargoda. That time Lord Brahma prays and Varahadeva will come and saves. But there is another time because Hiranyakashup, Hiranyaksha has not appeared by that time. In the Shveta Varaha and Rakta Varaha, so Jiva Goswami explains in the Chakshusha Manvantara, if you see in the Bhagavatam, in the sixth canto Daksha, he has uh, Sati, uh, she will uh, commit suicide and take, she takes birth again later. And Daksha also, he uh, gets a goat body and later he dies. And then he again appears in the sixth canto. And at that time, then he has uh, uh, Diti and Aditi as daughters. And then in the womb of Diti, the Daityas, Hiranyakashipu, Hiranyaksha, they take birth. So at that time, then again in that Manvantara, Chakshusha Manvantara, uh, Hiranyaksha and fights with Varaha. That's called, uh, uh, you know, Rakta Varaha. And the first one was Shweta Varaha. Two different, uh, you know, times that Varaha Dev comes. So it's a nice uh, day to meditate on Lord Varaha and particularly that fighting spirit of Lord Varaha Dev. Uh, there, there's so many glories of Varaha Dev. Mm. The, the hairs on the body of Varaha that will become the Kusha grass. And Kusha grass is sacred mm. in Yagnas and, and you have to sit on the Kusha grass for meditation. And Varaha Dev is also uh, the uh, you know, Yajna Purusha hmm? is also the recipient of the Yajnas that we perform. He's also glorified like that in the prayers. And particularly when there is some construction activity, when we build the temples and things like that, um, Lord Varahadev's worship is done. Hmm? And when the construction happens, uh, Lord, if we offer worship to Varahadev, uh, and then if you get his mercy, even if there are any uh, inadequacies, any mistakes we may have performed and take shelter of Varahadev and that, that project will succeed. So therefore the puja 
for Varaha Dev is also done uh, when constructing. So many uh, glories of Varaha Dev are there discussed in Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, uh, 13th, uh, 12th or 13th chapter, and later in the 18th chapter as well. And these, these glories are discussed in multiple chapters of Varaha Dev. So I'll stop here. We have eight more minutes. Uh, any comments or questions on today's Bhagavad Gita? Uh, first. I have, uh, yes. I have both, both comments and questions. Yes. Uh, one comment is that um, Prabhupada says that uh, there were two Varahas, but then he says that some authorities say there was only one Varaha. Says this, I think, in the eighth canto or ninth canto. He says some authorities say that Varaha went in the water during the Swayam Bhuva Manu and stayed in the water until the Revata Manu, and then he came out and fought Haranyakashipu. So but, uh, there are authorities that say both ways. Mm, I haven't, uh, I, I heard there are two, uh, but I didn't say that there is, I, I didn't hear there is one. Is that in the Bhagavatam? It's in the uh, Prabhupada's purport to, uh, to the eighth canto. Uh, um, let's say fifth chapter and sixth, uh, sixth verse. Oh, wow. Okay. It gives a, um, yeah, eighth canto, fifth chapter, sixth verse in the purport. Prabhupada says that eight, five, six. Yeah, I must have forgotten. I read this, but same Varaha. Yeah, see, according to others, uh, Varaha appeared during the. the the dream of Swayambhuva Manu and stayed in the water until that of Raivata Manu. Mm -hmm. So there's two, two possibilities. Stayed in that, okay. Yeah, thank you for pointing this out. Question now, here's okay. my question. In the purport to the first verse you read, I think that was 33. Mm -hmm. is 34, say, yeah, 34. There, okay, how about saying in the purport to, to Arjun, you know, don't run away in fear of being killed. Mm -hmm. But, so I, I don't understand that so much because previously, I think in the first uh, chapter, Arjun's already said, better they kill me unarmed. So he's obviously not afraid of dying. That's not mm -hmm. the issue. So I'm not, so I, I'm, so please explain to me so I have, how I can understand. If you will save your life by fleeing in the battle. Betty, uh, you know, so, uh, but, but Arjun's, not, it's not that Arjun's afraid. So how do we understand Prabhupada's comment there? Okay, if you leave the battlefield before the battle even begins, people will call you a coward. And if you think that people may call you bad names, but that you'll save your life by fleeing the battlefield, then my advice is that you would do better to die in the battle. For a respectable man like you, ill fame is worse than death. So you should not flee for fear of your life, but to die in the battle. That will save you from the ill fame of misusing my friendship and from losing your prestige in society. It, it seems he started with people are the ones who will say this, which fits in with the next verse, which says, Bhayad, uh, bhayad Ranadu Paratanam Mamsyan Tetva Maharataha. He says, others will think like that, which is what Krishna is saying. Mm. Uh, over there, and Srila Prabhupada also starts with, with that, you know, people will think, but then when it comes here, this statement, if you just take by itself, it seems that Prabhupada is saying that Krishna is saying that you are running out of fear. Right. Um, but I would, I would take what Krishna is literally saying and what Prabhupada also indicated, it may be just the, the flow of words, uh, which may look like, but the intent of Prabhupada and Krishna seems to be clear from previous sentences in the next verse. So I won't, I won't assume that Prabhupada is assuming that Krishna is assuming that Arjuna is afraid. Good. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's, you know, Prabhupada dictates stuff and his manuscripts and when it comes in this form. <laughs> well, you, you, yeah. you make an extremely important point that things yeah. are seen in context. Yes. You can't take things out of context because yes. obviously the point is being made as you very eloquently described. Others will think you ran away out of fear. Yes. That's really the point here. Yes. 
see it yes. in that context and we can understand. So I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you, Prabhu. So I have a question, Prabhu. Um, yes. So when, when the earth was submerged in the ocean, so that was before any inhabitants were on earth, Brahma is still creating because Swayam Bhum, when he's yeah, creating that, progeny. That's a very good question. Um, that, that's why, you know, this existence of two different uh, situations, right? If it was at the beginning, then where did Hiranyaksha come from, right? Um, mm -hmm. That's why Jiva Goswami says, uh, like, but now Murli Vadaka Prabhu pointed out. So if he came at that point and then he was there in the water still then, uh, but then why Swayambhuva Manu is asking at that time? Because by that time, Swayambhuva Manu has almost retired. That's why he gave the kingdom to, uh, you know, first Dhruva was ruling and that descendants completed. And then Priyavrata is the second son, uh, the Uttanapada and Priyavrata. Priyavrata descendant is Dhruva. Their rule will complete. And then the fifth canto, by the time of fifth canto, then Dhruva's descendants completed. And then Priyavrata uh, has to start. Then Manu goes all the way and brings Priyavrata to continue. So definitely this was not at the beginning of the creation. Uh, this, was, this was later that has happened. Um, so even uh, taking these two situations, even what Prabhu has said, then he was staying in the water since until the time, uh, you know, of later, uh, he's saying here, Raivata, in that part, Prabhupada said Raivata, I remember Chakshusha from Jiva Goswami's commentaries. So, but both of them, they come not in Swayambhuva, Manvantara. Mm -hmm. They come later. So definitely it's not at the beginning of the creation. Uh, if it was at the beginning of the creation, if, if we take that possibility, then there should not be Hiranyakashipu, just he just came and lifted up, which right. make makes sense. Right. Maybe, maybe at the beginning of the creation, it, it, you know, everything was there, Garbodaka water was there, and, and somehow the planet was there, and he just has to pick it up, which makes sense. Right. Right. If it was at the very beginning, it makes sense. Um, if it was later, then what is difficult to understand is why was Manu asking at the beginning of the creation, because uh, you know Manu just came out, and Manu and Shatarupa, they're starting their family life. They need some place, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that's how it appeared like. So there, there is a little bit of that's why there are multiple opinions here. Mm -hmm. and, and and yeah, and if the earth was submerged with inhabitants, what happened to the inhabitants? <laughs> yeah, so the, the inhabitants must not be there. Right. Uh, right. They, they must Except have, to make yeah. it more confusing, it is said that the reason that the earth sank was because of Hiranyakashipu. Exactly. His activities. Exactly. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. So, so that means where were the inhabitants at the time? You know, they they must have the demons must have you know took them someplace else. You know, they have other planets, right? So. Yeah, right. the, the demons are in charge and they were ruling, right, so right. obviously. He, he has the they, gold and yeah. he has the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they'll transport them someplace else. You know, they are ruling, they make slaves of people. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. That makes sense, yeah. 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 Krishna Prabhuji, can I add a small point here? Yes, Kanapati Prabhu, please. Actually, um, in the Lagu Bhagavad Amrit, under the mm -hmm. Lila Tara section, uh, it is mentioned by Rupa Goswami that. Um, there are two different varaha avtaras that come. One is mm -hmm. the varaha and other one is the rakta varaha. Yes. The rakta varaha comes in the chakshusha manvantara, not in the yes. ayambhu manvantara. And the chakshusha manvantara is, the rakta varaha is the one that kills hiranyaksha. Yes. The shweta varaha is the one that picks up the earth and you know brings up brings it up. And that's why we have two different uh, varaha appearances. Yeah. So this is my, this, what you said is my comprehension. What you said is exactly what I was saying, Shweta Varaha, Rakta Varaha. Uh, that was my comprehension. But when we saw Prabhupada's in the eighth canto, that Murlivada Prabhupada pointed out, uh, that was you know, giving these two, that same Varaha staying and coming. If we accept that, then, then that lifting that was mentioned at the beginning is very difficult to, to uh, reconcile. But what you read is easy to reconcile. Okay, in the beginning it was there, Shvetavara lifted, later Raktavara lifted. It seems it seems closer 
to accept a uh, lot of contradictions thank you for sharing that so that is in lagu bhagavata amrita yes prabhu ji yeah thank you okay so i think we are uh, two minutes after we should um, start hari krishna prabhu ji yes um this is that my humble obeisances um so i may have not uh caught um if you said this or not but um if varaha dev was holding up mother earth then on um what type of ocean like where was this ocean that they were fighting like on yeah so this this is it is said it's submerged in garbhodaka ocean the universe is half filled with the water that comes from the body of the lord actually garbhodaka ocean and it is submerged into that water and now he let it float now this is again incomprehensible what kind of water is that is that some ontological ocean uh, it's 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 not exactly the high h2o that we are seeing mm. yeah it it's probably more like a thin air <laughs> type of thing uh, the composition of that water uh, definitely not the water that we are seeing uh, it it it's something uh, finer it should be but it is garbhodaka ocean which is half filled the universe is half filled with garbhodaka water okay prabhu ji thank you very much hari krishna hari krishna Good thinking chaitanya <laughs> <laughs> i was thinking about that too and and somewhere i read the water was kind of filthy then it didn't make sense to me because it comes from the body of the lord i i i didn't touch upon that but now chaitanya is smart <laughs> okay thank you very much on the devotees for your association now our quiz there's master there's a poll right that's is yeah. rasraj prabhu doing the poll uh, hari krishna uh, no today we do not have a quiz uh, okay. but i have a quick announcement uh, tomorrow is uh, uh nityananda kayadoshi so appearance of nityananda prabhu so we are not having our regular bhagavad gita class but we are having our program at 6:30 uh, pm so 6:30 onwards we'll having uh, we'll be having a class and followed by aarti and kirtan so i re- request all the devotees please join tomorrow at 6:30 on the same zoom line and Hare fast Krishna. till noon also right trust prajapati fast till noon yes 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 yeah yes. Yes. yes thank you and i think we can close that okay thank you very much to us one chakalpa karu bhasht krupa sindhu pe eva cha krupa naam parame dio vaishnavi dio namo namaha shri prabhu ki jai anta prabhu vaishnavi namo jai